Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today we just did an Indiana classic, the fried pork tenderloin sandwich. Here we go. All right, I can't do this video without a quick shout out to my Indiana peeps. Sometimes we do a video called like regional favorites and I'll mention, hey, what's a fantastic regional favorite? Well, today is the pork tenderloin fried sandwich, Indiana Hoosier style fried sandwich. Matter of fact, there's a lot of different descriptions for this. Let's just keep it classic. I personally have never had one. So it'd be extremely naive or hard to replicate something I've never had. But I think we'll do a pretty good job. The idea, pork tenderloin or pork loin. I think you have to separate the two. I think the pork loin should be marinated. I don't see a reason to marinate a pork tenderloin because it already is so tender. The one thing I found ironic was the distinct line between how you serve it. You either serve it with mustard, pickle, and onion, or lettuce, tomatoes, and mayonnaise. Now, I might cross that line in between, forgive me if I do, but that's how I like my sandwich. So, with that being said, let's make a fantastic pork fried sandwich. Some people might look at this as a pork schnitzel. Obviously, you can't start a pork sandwich without the pork. I have already trimmed it, taken the silver skin off, and this is the idea. Since this is so tender, I don't wanna beat the crap out of it. It's not, once again, I just wanna make sure we know this is not pork loin, okay? So instead of taking a piece out like this and beating the heck out of it, we're going to just guess, maybe cut it in thirds. Then I am going to quickly show you a quick butterfly. Untraditional, I agree. But like I said, pork tenderloin is so tender. You just don't want all kinds of shreds everywhere. We could pound it just a little bit thinner as well. So it doesn't take long, and there we go. Okay, so let me show you right here. This is kind of like the Chateau Briand of the pork, the center filet. So I'm going to cut off about as thick as you want it. So we're going about a quarter inch. Open it up and then just basically have your knife do the work. As you unroll the meat, notice I'm not moving the knife that much. I'm just keeping it on the same plane and then unrolling the meat, which keeps it the same width, the girth, and the thickness. See that? Piece of plastic wrap, lightly oiled. And then we're just gonna take that pork, kind of right in the middle. We don't have to do a lot of work with it, but some will help. Use anything you want to to flatten it out with. Looking about a quarter of an inch. The pork's pounded out. Just use an all-purpose seasoning. I'm sure probably salt and pepper is traditional. We're gonna try a different seasoning. This is kind of like the goods and bads of uh, trying out stuff that's never been done before is you eventually just gotta try it on something. So we got a new seasoning in hand and the only way to try it out is as you see, trying it out. Let that set up, and now let's work on our dredge. A lot of my research said to use saltine crackers. I am on board with that. How much is it going to take? I don't know. But we want to do a little twist to this. Don't hate me. However you want to break them up, that's up to you. You want to keep them in the sleeve. Obviously, you have more pork. You can do that as well. Panko is one of my all-time favorites. So about a 50-50 mix. To that, we're gonna season it as well, and this is just more of a, a true all-purpose. Salt and pepper will take you a long ways. Just enough flour for the first uh, dredge. You don't need a lot. Two eggs. Some half and half, heavy cream, buttermilk, whatever you wanna use. Lately, we've been getting a lot of questions about how to shallow fry on the griddle. I've been personally contacted and uh, I've seen it on the griddle group several times now. There's really no right or wrong reason. It's just basically keeping your oil temperature down. I know that sounds crazy, but not all griddles are the same. So just because 
mine's on low or medium doesn't mean yours is, okay? There's a lot of temperature swings and all that stuff. The most important thing is, I know I get ridiculed because my griddle is uneven. I truly believe if I wanted an even griddle more often than not, I would make it even. Like it's my griddle and I, out of all the cooking that we've done on YouTube, prefer an uneven griddle. And when you say uneven, you mean unlevel. Yes. I have found that I like my oil to pull up on the right side because it hits that deep wall and then allows me to pull that oil back and you don't have to keep adding oil. Now, if you have the black stone, you can imagine if my grease trap was in the back and my oil ran downhill, then we would have a problem. Also on a black stone, the front lip, as you notice, is shallower than the back lip. So there are some griddles out there that might not work as well on. I'm just telling you through my experience, I prefer the oil to pull in a corner and then you can pull the oil back as you use it. So I'm just gonna allow the oil to funnel down there. It's gonna warm up. I'm not worried about it. Simply enough, the oil's heating up. I'm gonna show you one while I get the rest of them ready. Flour on all sides. You guys know the drill. Shake off the excess. Make sure it's all covered. All the nooks and crannies. Did you say shake off the excess? <laughs> excess? Yes. I had to think there for a second. Like I know I said something close. The excess. Yeah, you got to excess the nooks and crannies. <laughs> but you got to shake off the excess flour. Kind of pressing those uh, cracker mill pieces in there and the um, panko as well. All the nooks and crannies. Shake off the excess because you want to make sure all this gets access to the nooks and crannies. All right, so you notice how my oil is all over here. So I'm just going to manipulate a little bit, pull it down. And right there, you're basically just shallow frying, using your griddle to your advantage, finding that deep pull. And you're literally just deep frying on the griddle, really. Alrighty. When your pork tenderloin looks something like that, looky there, looky there. Effortlessly. Okay, pull that up. You still got that residential pull of oil there. And that's where the new piece is going to go. Residential or residual. What'd I say? <laughs> Residential? Yeah. <laughs> You're on a roll today, honey. Griddle's clean, the temp's coming down. I'm going to toast and steam at the same time. A little mayonnaise on the bottom. Can I just say this, the pork smells fantastic. Well, you it know. It smells amazing. I can't take all the credit. Now my wife has no idea what this looks like. So when I told her that the one, she thought the piece was too big. She said, we should have cut this piece in smaller. I said, no, the images that I've seen, like the pork is this big in the bun. It looks like a little slider bun. That's how they do it. I will say this, in fairness, I do understand why the pork needs to be super thin. Being tenderloin, I was scared that the, the pork would just shred too much. The commercial side's way better than the residential side, I can tell you that. For, th for thinness. It'd be hard to get it that thin for what I've seen online, but I'm sure there's some people out there that do it. Just imagine a little ring. It's funny, you only, 
dress this much. The rest of the stuff is I almost know. just like. It's a lot of pickle. And there we go. <laughs> the Indiana style fried pork sandwich. Alrighty, so, you know, I really don't know what to do from here. So I, I see the, the pictures. I understand the concept through the recipes, how to make it. But other than that, kind of lost for words. So some part of me wants the gravy. <laughs> I guess the best way to do it is just man up like you did on that burger. Yeah. So if you cut it in half, you kind of get like, oh yeah, the best Ooh. of both worlds. Now they say mayonnaise doesn't go on it. Mayonnaise only goes lettuce, tomato. So excuse me, but I did it my way, but you get first bite. You know, Cajun <laughs> seasoning would be really good Ooh, on this for Cajun some reason. Cajun seasoning, yeah. Golly. Mmm. 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 That's good. What about the cracker? Is the seasoning is mm. good? Just everything together or? Everything together. The pork is perfectly cooked. <laughs> it's a it's a good mix of flavor and texture. That's good. <laughs> Damn. The 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 mayonnaise and the mustard and the raw onion and the pickle and <laughs> I really, really like the saltines mm. in the, in the, uh, is that how they do it with saltines? Some do. Mm -hmm. That is a new hack for like shallow frying. I really like the saltine and panko. Mix. I highly doubt, I'll probably disrespect to somebody by using panko, but we swear we love up panko. and down by no disrespect. I just enjoy panko. So I'll do like the cross between the two. Um, Oddly enough, when I saw the images and I noticed that mustard was used with fried pork, I was like, man, that's not my style. Like the pickles and mustard, like the fried pork, I'm like, I'd much rather go the mayonnaise, lettuce, and tomato side. But after having it, even without the lettuce and tomato, I'm glad I put mayonnaise on it, but the mustard and pickle and onion is it's, what separates yeah, it. Yeah, super good. <laughs> so, yeah. It's super good. Hey, I you're not another, lying. I that, want another bite. That pork. That pork is perfect. And it can be done in so many, so many different applications. Uh, not on a bun. You can pour like a tasso gravy on it for Cajun style. Um, you can do eggs with sausage gravy. Tons of different ways. The pork is great. All right, let's do this. Let's go and call it quits. Let's enjoy and eat it. Uh, let's also tell them to check us out on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook, The Griddle Group. Check out these thumbnails to see which one should have made it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button for your friends. Peace. We take so many pictures, y'all, after we're done with the videos. 100% <laughs> legit. I would 100% recommend, I mean, no doubt. This yep. is good. It, it is super good. The whole combination, the whole sandwich is great.